to be careful what we wish for as we come into the new year. As we continue to prepare for 2016, I want to talk to you again about going to the next level. We're going to talk this morning about going to the next level part two. If you missed last week, you need to really get connected to what we shared in our previous service part one because it kind of sets the stage for what I'm going to be sharing this morning, which I think is going to be tremendously inspirational and encouraging to you. My question to you today is what area of your life do you need to go to the next level in 2016? What area of your life are you feeling unfruitful, unproductive, unfulfilled, unhappy? What area in your life do you want to see get bigger and better in 2016? Maybe you're in a season as we're turning the chapter on 2015 where you are feeling stuck and stagnant at work, in relationships, in your family, in your marriage. It's a time of frustration for you. I'm here to tell you God is not intimidated in the least bit by that frustration because you know what? The God that we serve, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of this scripture that we revere, specializes in miracle breakthroughs. He knows exactly how to break you out of where you are to take you to a higher and a bigger place in life. He knows how to move you out of that unfruitful, unproductive, unfulfilling season of your life so that his blessings can begin to break forth so that he can begin to pour into your life and that cup can begin to run over and over and over again in a way that will bless you. In Deuteronomy chapter 1, beginning in verse 5, if you're following along with your smartphone or you actually brought a Bible with you, in Deuteronomy chapter 1, beginning in verse 5, we have a tremendous word uh, that is going to speak to us this morning. The scripture tells us, east of the Jordan in the territory of Moab, Moses began to expound on this law, saying, He, Lord, our God, said to us at Horeb, people, You have stayed long enough at this mountain. Break camp and advance into the hill country of the Amorites. Go to all the neighboring peoples in Araba, in the mountains, in the western foothills, in Uh, Negev and along the coast to the land of the Canaanites and to Lebanon as far as the great river the Euphrates see I have given you this land go in and take possession of the land the Lord swore he would give to your fathers to Abraham Isaac and Jacob and to their descendants after them and we pray Lord that you just open our hearts and speak to us a word in due season by your Holy Spirit. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart that is responsive, Lord, to the word of revelation you bring to us, we pray in Christ's name. I believe that God has given me a word for you this morning, church. And this is his word. You have stayed long enough on your mountain and it is time to break camp and to begin to advance. How many of you believe that this morning? In other words, some of you are stuck and God is calling you to break out to a bigger, better, more challenging, satisfying, fulfilling next level in the year to come. In order to break camp and advance, you need to consider implementing the following next level principles that I want to share with you this morning. Some of these have been inspired by the transformational creative material that T.D. Jakes has has put together, and I encourage you to to read some of that material, view some of that material, because it's uh, very, very powerful and inspirational in its context. Why are these next level principles important? Because more times than not, God is going to ask us to do something in the process of moving us From one place to another, from taking us from one level to a higher level, he oftentimes will ask us to do something, to change some things up in our lives that will enable us to begin to move forward in ways that we have not moved forward. 
It will enable God to begin to write an open letter in our lives and through our lives. That's our theme for 2016, an open letter. We believe that God is getting ready to open and to write something new in and through this community and in and through your life in 2016. Next level principle number one that you've got to write these down because I think these will be tremendously encouraging to you. Number one, you have to learn how to break the rule. You have to learn how to break the rules that oftentimes are holding you back from the creativity and the greatness that God has that's been buried on the inside of you. Successful next level people are rule breakers. I'm talking about removing the barrier, changing the game. I'm talking about the barriers of tradition and culture and people and habits that have created those barriers that are keeping you from pursuing your dreams, visions, and destinies for the future. I'm not talking about good rules. I'm not talking about things like the Ten Commandments because there are certain rules that are rules that give life and bring blessings. But there's a whole other kind of rule that, sets of rules that, that imprison us and bring bondage into our lives that hold us back from being able to go to those higher places in our lives that we have longed for, that we have dreamt about. I'm talking about the unwritten rules that have incarcerated so many of God's people and kept them in a place of mediocrity. We're talking about the rules that have banished people to the mountain where they have gotten stuck for so long. Some of you have turned the corner in this new year and you are stuck in a mountain that you have dwelled in for a very long time in a particular area in your life. God's calling you out of that place, church. God's calling you to something better in your future. When we planted Word of Grace back in the spring of 1997, we determined that the best place for us to meet was in the Mayfield school system, running one of their buildings because the rents were so high in the Mayfield area. We were told it was impossible to be able to establish that kind of a relationship with the Mayfield school system. It couldn't be done. How many of you know that when you are told it can't be done, oftentimes the people that are telling you that are, are speaking out of information that they don't have. And they're oftentimes making statements out of what they don't know. Because you know what? We were the first church ever in the history of the whole Mayfield area that rented space and we met there for over eight years in the Mayfield Middle School as our church grew and we were able to raise the resources to buy the 36 acres of land we have out here in Chesterland and to build our first phase building here that we are now experiencing, a house of grace, a place where God has, has brought so many people to be touched by his love. Why? Because you know what? We determined that we would not be held back by a set of rules, a set of unspoken rules, sometimes a set of spoken rules that said it can't be done. Okay, so what's holding you back? What word has been spoken over you? What habit? What cultural mandate? What person has been limiting you and holding you back from being able to break through and to go farther and to go to that higher place? They're limiting your vision. They're limiting your creativity. You've got creativity on the inside of you that's just waiting to be released. We're talking, church, about coloring outside the lines. Don't mean to disappoint your first grade teacher. We're talking about coloring outside the lines, having the courage to go where people have never gone. When Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, church, he was breaking the rules. When John F. Kennedy said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country, you know what? He was breaking the rules. When Martin Luther King Jr. said, I have a dream, and he stood on those steps, 
He was breaking the rules. And I don't know if you realize this, but Jesus was the biggest rule breaker in history. He wasn't breaking the rule and the standard and the commandment of Scripture. On the contrary, he kept every jot and tittle of the law, the Scripture says. No, he was breaking the rule of the tradition of the Pharisees and the ruling elders today. Those rules are contained in a document that's referred to as the Mishnah. Hundreds and hundreds of rules that govern behavior that were bringing people into bondage back in the day. And there was more. The tradition of the ruling elders at that time brought people into bondage, imprisoned them, held them back from not only having a meaningful relationship with God, but from pursuing next level living, receiving the full blessings of God's grace and his mercy in their lives. Jesus said, I came to break those rules. How did he do that? He healed people on the Sabbath. He ate without washing his hands. He interacted and loved sinners. He interacted with and loved sinners. Plucked corn on the Sabbath day. And he became a rule breaker. Church, if you want to go to the next level, you have to learn how to break the right kind of rules. You need to be a rule breaker so that that vision, that creativity, that untapped buried potential on the inside of you can be released for the glory of God. Don't say it can't be done. Don't let anyone speak that over your life. God may have just been waiting for centuries for somebody to come along and do the very thing that you're hearing can't be done. How many of you are glad that Martin Luther didn't say, I don't do reformations? How many of you are glad that our founding fathers didn't say we are patriots and we don't start revolutions? How many of you are glad David didn't say I don't do giants? And more importantly, how many of you are glad that Jesus didn't say I don't do crosses? Amen, church? They were all rule breakers, breaking the rules, refusing to let fear hinder or paralyze them. Church, I'm here to tell you faith is the opposite of fear Faith says all things are possible to him or to her that can believe. For with God, nothing is impossible. Your destiny, your dream, your best you, all that buried treasure on the inside of you may be on the other side of fear, just waiting to be released. The inside of you, it's waiting to be released. But you got to get rid of the unspoken Habits and traditions and perspectives and opinions that have created those barriers that have imprisoned you. God wants to break you out and he wants to break you free in 2016. And in doing so, he wants to, number two, challenge your perception. Do you know that perceptions can limit you, hinder you, or they can bless you and release you? Each of us observes things in a particular way based on our interests, needs, past learning, history, values, and our bias. Sometimes that can limit you and I from seeing other alternatives and we get locked in, don't we? We get narrow-minded. We put a, on a set of lenses that only allows us to see in a limited way. We get locked into our work our finances, our family. If we're not careful, it can destroy our relationships. Some of you in 2016 need a new perception of your children, of your family, of your employer, of your co-workers, a new perception of your work and finances, and even a new perception of yourself in order to go to that next level. You, in fact, need a different perspective, not just a different 
perception because perspective always produces perception. So in order to change your perceptions, you've got to change your perspectives and how you're seeing all that's happening around you and what you're seeing going on the inside of you. God wants to change your perspective so that he can change your perceptions. If you have a narrow perspective, you're going to have a narrow perception of your work, of those relationships, of your past, your present, and your future. And how many of you know it always begins with us, doesn't it? Always begins with what's happening on the inside of us. That's why in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, it says, as a man or woman thinks in their heart, so are they. See, when we talk about our thought life, we're talking about our perspectives. We're talking about our corresponding perceptions. God wants us to get a handle on that. If you as a parent have a narrow perspective and a narrow perception, think about how that will affect your children in 2016. You will become the number one limiting factor in their lives because you keep saying you can't do that. You can't be that person. You can't go to college. You can't break out of the family business. You can't be successful. You can't move out of the house. You can't start that kind of business. The number one greatest impact. So we're doing a series on growing kids God's way, but you know what? It's not the church that has the greatest impact. It's mom and dad, right? So your perspective is going to create a set of perceptions that are going to be projected on them to either bless them and to release them or to limit them and to hold them back. That's going to be true for you in 2016. When you challenge your perception in a way that it can be enlarged, you enable yourself to look at the same situations, the same problems, the same people, and see things you've never seen before. Because there are things there that have not yet been seen. And I'm here to challenge you to consider that. Some of you need to dethrone the opinion you are carrying into 2016 about your home, about your work, about your business, and about your finances. I mean, you need to take a sledgehammer and just smash some of those opinions in order to be able to get released and to really move to that higher place in 2016. Can we put the vase diagram up on the screen? How many of you see a vase in that picture? Raise your hands. See the vase? How many of you see two faces? Okay, look at it real closely now. How many of you can see a vase and two faces at the same time? Think about what would happen if you looked hard and long enough at your life in 2016. Think about what can happen if you look hard and long enough at your work at the things that you are reaching for. Think about what would happen if you looked hard and long enough about the dream and the vision that you're pursuing. I wonder if you stared at your children, if you stared at your family, if you stared at your business, if you stared at your future, if you stared at your spouse long enough, what would you see in 2016? In our texts, eventually, there's 12 spies who are sent out into the promised land. Many of you know the story. 12 spies went in, 12 spies came out. 12 spies stood up and reported what they saw. Ten of them came back with a very narrow perspective 
that produced a very narrow set of perceptions about what could happen in the promised land. You know what they said? They said, we went into the promised land. Yeah, the promised land is, is, is rich, it's blessed, it's flowing with milk and honey, but you know what? We are but grasshoppers in the sight of those giants that are in the land. Do you know why that they came out with that set of perceptions? Because they went in with those set of perceptions. Very limited, very narrow. Not Joshua and Caleb. Joshua and Caleb, they ran to the stage and said, you know what, time out. Yeah, there's giants and there's fortified cities, but you know what? God has given us this land. We can do this. Why? Because they went in with a different set of perceptions and they came out with a different set of perceptions after spying out the land. Church, God wants to enlarge your perspective so that he can enlarge your perceptions, so that you can be bigger and better in the year to come. Amen? Amen. And in order to do that, you've got to be willing to not only challenge your perception, you've got to change your routine up. That's number three. You need to do something you've never done before. Go somewhere you've never gone. Church, go if you've never been to the, hear the Cleveland Orchestra. You need to do that. You know, if you've never traveled to another country, Make that your goal in 2016. If you've never done a missions trip, go on a missions trip. Go to one of our museums. We have some of the most amazing museums here in Cleveland. How many of you know that? Meet somebody new. Step out of your comfort zone. Some of you have not met someone new in years. You just have a circle of of friends and people you relate to. Step out and... As we said last week, enlarge the tent and invite some new people into the tent of your life and your influence. Because you know what's going to happen? It's going to enrich your experience. And new experiences bring inspiration. You got writer's block and there's no inspiration? It's because you don't have any new experiences. You've got to enrich your life with new experience. And out of that flows inspiration. When Jesus added the 12 to his life and ministry, guess what? He changed up his routine. When he sent 12 of them after he multiplied the loaves and fishes and and miraculously fed the multitude, when he sent those 12 onto the Sea of Galilee into a storm, guess what? He was intentionally changing up their routine to teach them how to trust him in faith. And God has a way of putting you and I out onto the sea where we encounter storms to change up the routine of our lives so that we can learn how to increase our faith and believe him for the miraculous. Learn to live a life dependent upon him. Inspiration is what motivates change, produces vision and dreams for the future. Some of you have got routines that you have kept for so long. You've become so stale and so stagnant. Take a step of faith and just break out. Try something different. Do something different. And in doing so, you're going to find that you've got a lot of clutter in your life. That's number four is you've got to clear out the clutter. Next level living is about clearing out clutter. The author of Hebrews said in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So you've got to get rid of the clutter if you're going to run swiftly and unencumbered. You've got to unload some stuff in your life. My question is, what negative emotion is clogging your pipeline to God, to others? and to the life that he wants to impart to you. Jesus said, it's the thief that comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. He wants to rob you of the next level. I'm here to tell you, he is doing everything he can 24-7 to rob you of your next level. You need to know that. He's ready. But Jesus said, I've come to give you life. And life more abundantly. And when the abundant life flows, it's transferred from him to you and I. 
we go to the next level. We break out. We break through. Stuff starts happening in our lives. So what negative emotion is clogging your pipeline? What anger, what anxiety, what fear, what hatred and unforgiveness, what codependency, what pride, what insecurity is holding you back from loving the people that need love in your life and that need love in their life? God said, I'm ready to collaborate. I'm ready to write an open letter, but I need you to first hew out the stone." You got to take the first step. You got to do your part. What do you need to clear out in your mind in 2016? What do you need to clear out of your heart? What do you need to clear out of your emotions to be that bigger and better person? And I'm here to tell you, you don't have to be anybody else but yourself. God created you unique, He wants you to be you. We want you to be you in 2016 because you bring something to the table here that is just unique. And God wants to write an open letter in and through you in this new year. God wants to see your best you in 2016. It's, e it's easier and better to fight the clutter, ladies and gentlemen, than it is to miss the opportunity in the coming year. A whole lot easier to get rid of all the stuff that's clogging your pipeline than it is to miss the blessing, to miss what God has for you in this coming year. Some of you are clogged by stuff from the past, from your childhood, from the last job that you just came from, from a previous relationship, from a failure in the past. God said, you've got you to get rid of that. And let's get over that so that you can move out of that mountain. You can start advancing forward. It's time for some of you here today to start breaking camp in 2016. God said, enough is enough. Are you dissatisfied with mediocrity? with where you live. And you know, God just gave me a word, and I'm just going to be obedient to do this, and I don't do this very often, but you know what? God gave me the word abortion this morning as I was preparing for our message. Some of you ladies here who've had an abortion, that has been clogging your pipeline and hindering you from really being able to move forward. And I got a word for you. God wants you to know that child is safely in his arms. Amen? God does not hold that child accountable for your actions or his or her sins. Covered by the grace of God. We believe that. But all children who go home to be with the Lord prematurely. And, and I want to say that as a word of encouragement to you because God wants you to know that He's got you covered. That's been taken care of. And he wants to release you so you can move forward. Unclog the pipeline so that you can be your best in this new year. You've got to ask yourself these questions in order to really deal with what's, what's clogging that pipeline in 2016. What goes? You should write this down. What stays? And what new thing does God want to do in your life? What goes, what stays, and number three, what new thing does God want to do? And you need to follow your heart in that as you're answering those questions. That's number five, follow your instinct. Church, there's a difference between instinct and intellect. When instinct and intellect ride together, I'm here to tell you, you need to give instinct the wheel. Because intelligence and intellect only validates your hunches. How many of you know that facts don't always equal truth? Amen? Doctors give you facts, but it doesn't always equal the truth. You missed a great place to confirm that, church, because you know what? 
There are some facts that are given to you medically that you need to just say, hey, I'm not going to accept that. You know what? I am going to get beyond this. I'm going to fight this cancer and I'm going to win. It's not my death sentence. You know, that diagnosis is not going to define my present and my future. You need to follow your instinct. Do you know how many crimes have been solved on a hunch? That's church's instinct. I see Rick Pushkar here this morning. Rick tells a story. It'll, it'll kind of put you on the edge of your seat about how on a hunch, this is instinct, that there was an unsolved crime here. It was in Cleveland, right? Was it here? What's that? Willoughby Hills. Unsolved crime. I'm not going to give you the details. I'll let Rick tell you the story because he's a great storyteller. But he tells a story how on a hunch, he follows a lead that solves a crime that for many years was unsolved. We got a crime stopper right here, Rick Pushkar. Let's show our appreciation for Rick. Rick is a former uh, police officer, actually still working, I think, um, detective, and uh, just an incredible story how on a hunch, following that instinct, he was able to solve that crime and he did it in a miraculous way. I'm thinking about how that when uh, Jesse, doing some detective work, sends his son David to check on his brothers when the Israelites had gone to battle with the Philistines and, and Goliath comes down into the valley and for 40 days and 40 nights he's, he's screaming out and challenging the Israelites with fear, taunting them. And it's by instinct that David says, is there not a cause? It's by instinct that he steps up to meet the challenge because he just senses, he just knows somehow, some way he is going to be able to, to meet this challenge. What an incredible battle is fought between David and Goliath. And David knew something intuitively in that instinct. This is number six, that he had to rely on partnership for this to be possible, for that miracle to happen. What's unique about the church is we have a partnership with God. God says, I want you to hew out the stone. I want you to go touch the hem of Christ's garment, like the woman, the woman did who had the issue of blood and received her miracle. He said, I want you to pick up your mat and walk like the man at the pool of Bethesda. I want you to cast off the coat that has labeled your life that is part of what has imprisoned you from being able to really move forward the same way that blind Bartimaeus did so that he could relieve his, receive his miracle and his eyes were open. God said, if you'll cast off that coat, I'll open your eyes up. I'll let you see things you've not seen before about your past, your present, and your future. But you've got to do your part. Bring your two loaves and your five fish like the little boy was the key to the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. He took that small boy's lunch. He blessed it, broke it in his hands, multiplied it, and it fed a multitude. It doesn't matter how small it is. God says, bring it. What you have to bring. What seed is in your possession that can be the miracle for your 2006? And God says, you bring it. You bring what you have. Give it to God. David brought a sling, church. Five smooth stones. He was not pulling out the cannons. He wasn't launching the nukes. David brought a sling. He brought five smooth stones. The number five in Scripture represents grace because he knew God had this. He knew that this was ultimately God's battle. He said, God, I'm taking my sling. I'm taking those five stones. I'm going to do my part, and I believe, and I'm trusting you to, you to do your part. And I'm here to tell you that when he launched the first rock, the power of God was released because that rock hit Goliath square in his forehead. It sank, so stunned Goliath that he fell over giving David just enough time to come and to kill his giant. Church, 
God is waiting for you to take what you have, put it in his hand as a partnership so that he can take you to places you've never gone. God will bless what you bring. God said, bring those tithes into the storehouse. God said, I'll bless them. But you've got to bring it. Because this is a partnership that we have together. God said, if you'll break the rules, challenge your perception, change your routine, clear the clutter, follow instinct, and rely on partnership. And lastly, number seven, if you'll put God first, you will see God take you to places that will bring great encouragement to your heart in this coming year. Did you know the first two commandments have to do with putting God first, making him number one in your life in the coming year? Jesus said in Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all that you have need of will be added unto you. What's he talking about? He's talking about putting God first. God said, Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, if you're concerned about how you're going to make it, how you're going to make it in your business, how you're going to make it in your finance, he says, you know what? Put God first. Seek first the kingdom, the things that are important to him. And he said, I'll take care of what you need. How you're going to eat, how you're going to be clothed, where you're going to live, I'll take care of all those things in your life. It just happens, church. It just flows out of that abundance and that relationship. He said in Proverbs chapter 3, honor the Lord with what the first fruits Say that with me this morning. First fruits. He said, of all your increase. He said, so shall your barns be filled with plenty and your presses will burst out with new wine. That's a promise. See, we need to commit to first fruits as we launch into a new year. First fruits is about putting God first. We do that in our week by coming to church on the first day and saying, I am committed to a community of faith where I'm going to hear the word of God. I'm going to receive his revelation. My kids are going to get the seed of his word in their hearts, and together we are going to grow individually and as a family as we are coming into a new year. We do it daily with our personal devotions by taking the first portion of our time in the morning and practicing the presence of Jesus, right? The first portion of our finances. What are we talking about? We're talking about first fruits living. We're talking about honoring God and putting God first. God spoke through the prophet Haggai and said, you've got holes in your bag. Haggai chapter 1 verse 6. He said, you've sown so much and you bring in little. You eat but you don't have enough. You drink but you are filled with drink, not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves but no one is warm. He who earns wages, earns wages to put it into a bag with holes. He said, you know why? Because you're not putting me first. And you are not acknowledging me. That's the key word that I want you to take away into the new year when it comes to putting God first. Not only the word or the phrase first fruits, but the word Acknowledge. God wants you to acknowledge the people in your life that have helped you to get to where you are. But most importantly, he wants you to acknowledge him in your life. Some of you don't realize that the reason you got to where you are today and the reason you're here is because God has been covering you with his grace. He's been covering those relationships. He's been covering that business. He's been covering those finances. God says, I want you to acknowledge me. Back to Proverbs chapter 3, says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. You've done that too many times. That's why you got holes in your bags. Acknowledge him in all of your ways. Say, God will make your paths straight. Some of you are in a wilderness season in your life. God said, you know what, I know exactly how to get you to where you need to go. But you got to acknowledge him. God said, I am not going to acknowledge you and your finances and your business and your dreams until, or I'm not going to bless you in those places until you first acknowledge what I've done up to this point in your life. You're not going to the next level until you 
have a heart of gratitude until you acknowledge God. And so, under the leadership of Joshua and Caleb, 40 years later, they do come into the promised land. And they take city after city after city and they get established. And that promise is fulfilled. Joshua comes to the end of his life. Joshua says, some of you still, you're not honoring God. You're still not putting him first. But I want you to know this. This is his farewell speech. As for me and my household, we're going to serve the Lord. And he draws a pretty big line in the sand. And that's how he leaves his season of leadership. What was he saying? Put God first. Acknowledge him. Bring the first fruits. Everything else will just flow out of that. Church, I have a word for you. You have stayed long enough on your mountain. It's time to break camp and to begin advancing once again. Thank you for listening to this message and visiting us online today. We want you to know that all of the messages that we prepare, all of the messages that we preach are designed to give people an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ into their hearts as Lord and Savior. I know that some of you that are listening online and that listen to this message today are asking hard questions about life, hard questions about faith, hard questions about God, hard questions about life after death. You're looking for some clarity, some certainty. My prayer is that today's message and the messages that you're connecting with our online community will help to bring some clarity to your life, some direction, some strength, some hope. If God touched you during the message today and you recognize that you need more of God in your life and you want to get reconnected to Him, you want to receive the forgiveness of sins, you want to know that you know that you know that if this was your last day on planet Earth, that heaven is your home, that you're right with God, that you've got peace with Him, I want to give you an opportunity to experience that today. You say, how do you do that? You do that by praying the prayer of salvation and surrendering your heart and your life to Christ. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10 that if we believe in our heart and we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, we shall be saved. That's an incredible promise. It's a promise about God reconnecting with his sons and daughters, about us having a personal relationship with him. And I want you to know today that that promise is so powerful that God wants us to know that it's a gift that he's given to us that can't be bought, earned, or bargained for. It's a gift that can only be received. It's not automatic. It has to be personally received into our hearts. So much so that the Apostle John said, in John chapter 1 of his gospel, he said that for as many as received him, Jesus, he, the Lord, gave them the power to become the sons and the daughters of God. He gave them the right and the privilege to become the sons and the, daughter, the daughters of God. It's a personal connection. It's a personal right a personal passage that happens. So I'm going to pray this prayer in just a moment and give you an opportunity to make that connection. If you want to know him and you want to connect with him, then just pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for my sins. On the third day, I believe you rose from the dead. I acknowledge that I need you in my life. I invite you into my heart today, Lord Jesus, to be my Lord and my Savior. I confess you today as Lord and Savior of my life. In Christ's name I pray. If you prayed that prayer today, God has set your life on a new course and a new spiritual journey has begun. It is going to be filled with adventure and hope and we believe it's going to be life-changing for you. Some important things you need to do to grow in this relationship and to begin growing in your faith. Number one, you need to get into a good local church. You can't do this by yourself. You need to be in a good Bible church where the 
Bibles being taught and there's a strong sense of community where you can begin to grow with other believers spiritually. You need to begin reading your Bible on a daily basis. If you don't have a Bible, just download the Bible app. If you'd like us to send you a New Testament, contact us through our website. We'll send you a New Testament and you can begin to, to connect with the Bible in a personal way. Start praying on a daily basis. Let the Lord know what your needs are and some of the struggles you're going through and watch how He'll start touching your life. And then I want you to tell somebody about what you've experienced. If you're nearby, we would love to have you come and visit us on site for one of our Sunday morning celebration services. Linda and I and our staff would love the opportunity to personally meet with you and to get to know you uh, in a personal face-to-face -face kind of a way. And so thank you for visiting us online and listening to this message today. Stay in touch and let's stay connected.